So hi everyone again, nice to see you all to attend the webinar. So let me introduce myself. I, my name is Jeffrey. I'm from Division of Program Promotion, Utah. Okay, so um, welcome and we are happy to invite our Utah alumni and bring you a precious sharing by them. So we first uh, introduce you Dr. Yamuna. Okay, she is Associate Professor from Utah. She's here now. So, um, and our Utah alumni, Mr. Yong. Okay, he is now in a position apprentice protege this program and from Petronas. And our Utah alumni, uh, another Utah alumni, Miss Nagara Chanam. Okay, her position is an engineer, R and D field, and actually she is from UP Peking Sandrian Bahai. And uh, one thing to highlight. Um, actually, one of our Utah alumni, Mr. Naresh, uh, is not able to make it uh, the alumni sharing today. So um, we actually cordially invited Ms. Naga to join us to share with you also. And she is actually from Petrochemical Engineering. And uh, they will share with you shortly. So I will pass the floor to Dr. Yamuna now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Jeffrey. So first and foremost, I would like to welcome uh, all the participants in the Zoom platform and also in the uh, FB Live. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'm actually, okay, as uh, introduced by uh, Mr. Jeffrey just now. So, I'm a lecturer in the Department of uh, Petrochemical Engineering. Okay. So, I've been working in Utah for 11 years and today I will moderate this session. Okay. So before I uh, let the alumni to uh, share their experience with you, okay, I just want to uh, uh, put a statement forward. Why we need petrochemical engineers more now than ever, okay? If compared to 10 years or 15 years back, actually we need the petrochemical engineers uh, more compared to uh, the previous time, okay? Uh, this is a story of Sam. I think some of you is like Sam who actually took the effort to join this session. Okay, Sam is a STPM liver. He just finished his STPM and then he want to work in the field of oil and gas. So previously since small, his ambition is to become an engineer in the oil and gas industry. But recently, Sam have a little bit of self-doubt and confusion. Uh, this is mainly because uh, he don't know what is the future of the petrochemical industry after the COVID-19. And of course, if we look around, we know that the oil price is fluctuating. I am nearly 40 now. So whoever who was my batch, they will know that when we were young, the oil price was always high. It never dropped. Okay. But recently, the oil price is sometimes, you will observe in the market, the oil price is very low and sometimes it will go up. So what is this oil price have to do with the future of the petrochemical industry? And then, of course, all the news that we hear about the depletion of resources. Uh, we hear news, oh, by 2013, uh, 2030, all the oil is going to finish. Or maybe 2050, there are no more oil to drill. So there's a lot of news like this. So is this a fact? Is this true? And then of course we have competition in terms of usage of oil for uh, fuel and energy from renewable energy resources, clean energy resources. So we have solar energy, we have wind energy which is coming up. Then we have also have hydrogen uh, fuel cells which is a competitor for the oil and gas industry. So based on all these um, questions, where is actually the petrochemical industry future? Uh, can Sam actually survive in the petrochemical industry? Is it wise for him to choose the petrochemical industry as his uh, career path? So Sam is confused and I believe some of you too. So let us help us Sam, okay, to learn the truth to differentiate between the facts and the meat, okay, in the news that you hear about the petrochemical industry. So all of us know the story of oil and gas. Huh? We have learned in school, we heard it so many times, okay. 
So all the animals and plants die a million of years ago and they are deposited on the bottom of the sea or on the bottom of earth and then due to the pressure and temperature they turn to oil. And we humans drill these oils and we use this oil as a source of fuel and also a source of energy. Uh, this is what we learn in school. But the truth is the oil and gas industry is actually a 360 degree ecosystem. It consists of the upstream, midstream and downstream. Okay. So when we talk about the upstream, we are talking about exploration and production, which means we find where is the oil and then we try to extract the oil from the earth. And currently, because uh, we are exploring new resources, okay, we have new technology to explore new deposit of oil. Okay, I also believe that you heard something about shale gases. Okay, it's a it's new source of oil and gas. Okay, then we go to the midstream industry. After we drill the oil, we have to distribute the oil. So the midstream industry is about storage and distributing. Then after that, we have downstream. Downstream is actually uh, the part that we refine the oil and we produce the actual product like gloves, fertilizers uh, and chemicals for cosmetics, paints and polymers uh, like uh, which you use in your daily life. So our students, okay, our graduates in the petrochemical industries, uh, there are some working in the upstream and mostly is in the downstream. Okay. So this is another popular diagram. I believe that you have seen this diagram in your textbook, okay? Where this diagram will make you to believe that most of the crude oil that we drill is used for the, uh, the only application of that crude oil is for energy and for fuel, okay? And energy is like the gas that you use for cooking to generate electricity and the fuel is for your automobile, aircraft, and any other transportation, okay? But the truth is, some part of this oil is also used to produce products which you use in your daily life. And this product ranges from simple product like your toothbrush, uh, your plastic packaging, to the part of aircraft. And can you imagine your life without these products? Okay, it's, it's like going back to the Stone Age, right? So previously, okay, I can say that before the 2019, okay, in a barrel of a crude oil, only 15% of the crude oil is converted to these products that you see. Others are all used for fuel and also for energy, okay? But in the future, there will be less demand for crude oil for energy and transportation. Okay, this is because the ever fluctuating oil price and their depletion of resources, their development of renewable energy, which is more cleaner to substitute the oil and gas based uh, energy. And of course, the impact of COVID-19. And there are more demand for petrochemicals for the product because of increasing population. More people, we are going to use more products. Improvement of lifestyle. For example, I am using more products than my parents would have used. My parents would have used more product than whatever my grandfather have used. So as your lifestyle improves and your quality of life improves, you will use more products. And these products are coming from petrochemicals. And the Industry Revolution 4.0 can cause a mass production of this product and supply to the global uh, market and globalization of market. You can buy petrochemical products or any products from Shopee, from Lazada, from Amazon. So these uh, platforms allow the grow and demand for the petrochemical products. So there's many opportunity for the petrochemical products. So what the oil and gas industries are doing, what the companies are doing now, basically they are trying to produce more petrochemical products and reduce their production or conversion to oil and gas. Okay, for example, this is an article by Saudi Aramco, which by 2025 and another four years, they want to convert 
45% of the crude oil to petrochemical product. So they want to increase the fraction of the petrochemical product and reduce the fraction of oil and uh, gas for transportation and energy. Actually, this was happening slowly and what COVID-19 did is it have, uh, it have increased the speed of, speed of the process of the companies doing this. Because finally, the company realized if there are no cars and no lorries, no aircraft using their fuel, like what happened during the few months of uh, COVID-19, they will face a big loss in their company. So it's better for them to take this action now because in future, you are going to buy electrical car. I'm also going to buy electrical car. So there'll be less and less usage of oil and gas and less demand. So they have to look into new market too uh, for the oil and gas uh, resources. So these companies are producing new plants, uh, doing integrated complex, are coming up with new industries to produce these products. And what does this mean? This means there are more jobs creation in the petrochemical industry. So this is another article. You can search for these articles in, uh, in the net. Okay, Reliance Industry also agree that in future, they want to focus more on hydrogen fuel cell and they want to build more integrated petroleum refining complex to produce petrochemical products. Okay, so they have shifted their focus from oil and gas to petrochemical products. And then this is our neighbor, Indonesia. They also want to tap into the petrochemical industry. And this is another article which highlights uh, this issue. And this is what going to happen in Sarawak, where they are going to, uh, they are proposing to have a petrochemical hub, uh, which is expected to create 74,000 jobs. Okay. So this uh, integrated refinery system will create more jobs for petrochemical engineers. And this is Pengerang Integrated Petroleum Complex. This is already in place in uh, Johor. And Petronas is one of the major player in this uh, integrated complex. And this complex okay, will be a port, a hub in the Southeast Asia uh, for integrate uh, to uh, refine uh, petrols and to produce petrochemical products. So what you can see here is the petrochemical industry is not going anywhere. It's just shifting uh, from producing a certain product to a more complex product, which will actually give them more profit and create more uh, job opportunity for the young generation. So the field is full of new opportunities and maybe we can uh, Sam now will be less confused and if some of you is confused about your future, maybe you also will be less confused and uh, maybe you feel more confident to pursue your studies in the petrochemical engineering field. But the question now is why he or she should come to Utah to do this degree. So to answer that question, we have two of our alumni here today. Uh, Mr. Yong Wei Ming from Petronas, he have graduated from Utah one and a half years ago. And then we have Miss Nagaratnam, she's currently working in Uppacking Sundriam Berhad, and she have graduated from Utah two years ago. So these alumni, we share their experience and what they have gone through in Utah and how Utah have molded them to, be, uh, to pursue uh, their dreams in their respective fields. And before I pass the, uh, and without further ado, I pass the floor to uh, Mr. Yowimi to share his experience. Okay, thank you, Dr. Yamuna. Um, let me share my screen before all. Okay, so I guess everyone can see my screen, right? So uh, I will continue with the sharing section to share a little bit about my experience after I graduate from university. So before all, let allow, please allow me to introduce myself. So as 
what Mr. Jeffrey introduced just now. I'm my name is Yong Wei Ming, so you can call me Yong. I'm a Utah graduate who graduated uh, in June 2020 with background of petrochemical engineering. I'm from Changlun Kedah, and currently I'm working at Petronas Charigari Sandiram Berhad under Upstream Process Safety Department based in KLCC Tower 2. So let's start our sharing today. So at first, I, I'm going to start with the working experience. Uh, after graduate from University Tunku Abdul Rahman, I actually start my career life in a company called A Elastic Industries Sendiran Berhad. A Elastic Industries Sendiran Berhad is actually a rubber manufacturing company. And the major product in manufacture is the NVH rubber sheet and the EPDM granule. So, NVH uh, rubber sheet actually for you all, I think quite not so familiar with that. So actually it's uh, in the full name is called noise vibration and hardness sheet. So it's majorly used in automotive to block the sound and absorb the sound as well as the construction. So I start the position with the executive management trainee from 1st of July up to 30, 30th of September, 2020. So after that, I was promoted to technical and operational executive. And I worked for Air Elastic Industries at the Berhad for nine months, up to 31st of March. So what I in charge there, actually major, majorly I'm in charge of the production line management which actually I take care of the productivity as well as the quality of the products. So after that, actually I also help out in a little bit of the research and development management, which I used to conduct the experiment to improve the product qualities. When we talk about the improvement of rubber products, actually we talk about the criteria such as properties of the rubber, we improve properties of the rubber, which is consists of SG, hardness, as well as the order and color. Yeah, and then we also improve the cost because as you know, from time to time, month to month basis, actually the rubber raw material price will fluctuate. So we need to balance as a production engineer, we need to balance between the cost of raw material to control the profit margin. So the last one, we also need to improve on the color because for the, especially some of the rubber products such as EPDM granule, we need to make sure the color matching is correct because different rubber, a different color of rubber actually using in different application. You need to keep that in mind. So actually I also help out in a little bit of the logistic and transport. Majority is at the packaging and delivery of goods. I think that's cover my nine months in a elastic industry, Sandiram Berhad, which I consider it as a downstream industry. So after that, I joined Petronas Charigali Sandiram Berhad as a apprentice in Portugal G's program from 1st of April, 2021 up to now. So during past three months, actually majority I'm in charge of all those safety-based stuff. So as you know, I mentioned earlier, I'm working under Department of Process Safety. So I get involved in PHA, which also known as process, process hazard analysis, such as hazard and hazard. HESOP actually it denote the hazard and operability study as well as the hazard, it denote the hazard and identification study. So beside that, I also in charge on the deep dive analysis. Up to now, I, uh, I involved in piping and vessel study. So when we say deep dive here, actually deep dive is mean we study all the accident happen regarding the piping, regarding the vessel, no matter it's onshore or offshore. So we study what happened and how we 
what we can do to prevent that happen. So when we want to prevent the piping and vessel problem, normally we will introduce the safeguard. The safeguard is like the prevention method. So after that, actually, I also help out in the asset budgeting. Asset here in Petronas, we mean that the facilities, such as the onshore platform, offshore platform. And in this department, actually, we take care of four overseas assets, which including uh, Myanmar, Iraq, Indonesia, as well as Turkmenistan. And for Malaysia, we take care of the peninsula Malaysia, Sabah and Sarawak, oil and gas. Yeah, that's basically covered the three months, the past three months of my career in PCSB. So the main question come, what did I apply for the past one and a half year after I graduated from university? And how the petrochemical engineering course actually helped me in make my career life more smooth. And then what course actually did I apply during this one and a half year? So first, I want to give credit to the organic chemistry, which I studied uh, maybe four years ago in, during my year one degree. So why this organic chemistry, we consider it as a basic course actually help me a lot because organic chemistry actually give me a very strong fundamental of chemistry, especially in hydrocarbon based products. So I can understand better all the process. So I won't like so confused when I first joined the industry and first start my career. So as you know, I joined the rubber manufacturing company at first. So this subject actually helped me a lot in understanding and pick up. Secondly is the polymer technology, which also a first year subject. Polymer technology actually give me a very clear idea on how the polymerization works and how the polymer behave and what you should do and you shouldn't do when you want to develop a formulation and how you want to change the properties and change the criteria uh, requirement uh, following the requirement of the customer. So third, I want to give credit to the occupational safety and health in petrochemical plants. Yeah, this one is considered some sort like a guideline for engineer. That's mean, this actually come, uh, comes in important for me after I joined Pretonas because after I joined Pretonas, as I'm in, in safety department, I need to get this subject as a guideline or baseline for me when I study the, study the case and then I do some analysis on the case so I can make a very correct decision and very accurate analysis on the case. So this one I think is quite important for, for the engineers, especially the one work in safety department. And the fourth one is the plant design. Plant design is a very, very, very important subject. Why do I say so? Because plant design actually give you a very, very strong idea on how the plant works. And the most important, it let you to understand the PNID, which we denote the process and instrumentation diagram. So you can read how the plants work, all those piping, all those vessels, valve, all those things. So you can know how, how the process of the plant going so you can do a proper decision when you want to do, want to solve a question, solve a problem occurring in the plant. So the second last one is the petrochemical process. Petrochemical process actually, uh, it gives me a clear idea especially when I work in upstream. It teach me about the uh, refinery process, the cracking process, distillation, and much more. And then teach me how, how the process work and then what you need to take care, especially when I doing hazard analysis, I need to know like 
uh, distillation, it got some possibility on maybe higher pressure. And then what you need to do to reduce the pressure, which valve, and then like every subject is correlated. So it's quite important for you to master all these subjects to carry out your work efficiently. The last one I would like to give credit to a law for engineers. When you talk about law, you can imagine it's very, very, very boring. Yeah, I know. But the problem is you need the law uh, tolerate with the company policy to build out, to build out uh, to build out the guideline for you to follow when you're doing some case study, inspection, all those things. So because as an engineer, we cannot set our own standard. We need to follow the law, follow the standard, and even the policy. So we need to keep in mind that law for engineers is very important for us. So they basically cover what I apply. Actually, it have more than that, but I just highlight these six because I found out they are very, very important. So let, before I end my sharing, I would like to share a little bit about my challenge that I encountered during the one and a half years after graduation. So first, as an engineer, especially a fresh grad, we need to continuously study. That means why we need to keep learning new things. Why? Because engineering is always, always changing and we need have to keep fresh skill and then we have to catch up, especially like me. I consider myself as a fresh grad, even though I already graduated one and a half year ago. So there's a lot of things for me to learn Actually, when I first joined AISB, I learned a lot of things about rubber because as you know, university actually give you a very surface idea. I mean, knowledge, which actually is quite surface, but it's very necessary for you to pick up the upcoming knowledge. So you need to continuous study as a engineer, especially a newcomers. So after that, the second one, the challenge I meet is about determining a career path. So as you know, I already changed my job twice in a one and a half years duration. So actually I found that each new role actually require me to constantly reassess where I'm going and what I want to be in the next five years, maybe next 10 years. First, I joined as a newcomer in uh, rubber industries. And then I found out actually my passion is not in rubber industries. That's why I joined Petronas as a, as a newcomer as well. So I joined the oil and gas industry. The, because uh, after I changed my job, you can realize that actually the rubber industry and the oil and gas industry is very different. And then it will probably give you a different expectation on your future, all those things. So it comes to be a challenge when you want to determine a career path. So you need to think twice about that. Make sure your passion so you can work properly. And then the third one is the profound responsibility. So profound responsibility, why it become a challenge for me? Because actually as a as an engineer, it's quite difficult for you to achieve work-life balance. Why do I say so? Because in fact, you need to work long hours. You need to expect that as an engineer. I, what I experienced before is um, I need to work out of my office hour, especially when it comes to when you're having a meeting with the overseas colleagues or those things like last one month ago, I having a meeting with my Turkmenistan colleague. So because of their time is three hours lag after us. So we need to work three hours more to balance back the times, times difference. So the fourth one is the communication. Maybe every, everyone know how to communicate, but in fact, communication is a very huge issue when you come to work future on. Why did I say so? Because the communication between engineers, even though with your colleagues, 
from different background, maybe HR, maybe accounting, maybe management. Also, sometimes it's quite challenging as well. Why? Because let's take an example of communication between engineers and engineers. Because let's take an example of chemical engineers and mechanical engineers. You can know they have different, different terms that it's not like a light terms. Maybe like different background engineers have different term, different company have different term. And then let's say the engineering term is not so understandable by the others background, such as accounting. Maybe they cannot understand. So my advice here is you can keep your words as simple as possible. And yeah, of course, as clear as possible. So the others can understand you better. So you can face less problem during your communication. So the fifth one is the job transition. Well, the job transition is a problem for me because after I resigned from a Elastic and Joy Pretonas, actually I encountered a little bit of culture shock. Why I say so? Because you can imagine a Elastic is a SME. SME we means as a small and medium enterprise. So when it come to a top ranking players like Petronas, the working culture is very different. So you need to adapt to the new people first. Secondly, you need to learn the new skills. And sometimes it requires you to learn the new knowledge. Maybe you need to focus more. Before this, I focus more on the rubber. After this, I focus more on the oil and gas. It's very different for the engineer. Even though oil and gas and rubber is seem uh, maybe a little bit of related, but actually quite different. So you need to possibly uh, accept the change and then you need to learn new skills to overcome all those problems. So one more thing is you possibly will have a change in work location as well. For me, even though I'm still in Selangor, but actually I encountered two different working locations. So the last one is the school versus real world. This one also quite a challenge for me because not uh, the engineer in classroom is very different from the engineer at work. Uh, especially it comes to the real life problem because the real life problem never have well-defined and universally correct answer. You cannot expect like, the problem you face at the at the real life is same as the problem you face during your final exams or your assignments or your uh, exercises, all those things. You got a well-defined answer, step-by-step step, teaching you how to solve the answer. No, it won't happen this way. You need to crack your head and then use up all the knowledge and maybe you need more to solve the problem. So that's the challenge for me. So from this, I think I end my section here and then I will pass over the uh, section to Miss Naga. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Yong. So now we will have our uh, second alumni to share her experience with us. Miss Naga, she already there, I can see her. So now I will share the screen uh, on her behalf, okay? Thank you, Mimi. Okay, Miss Naga. Hello, everyone. Good day to yes. Good day to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you to Miss, uh, sorry, to Doctor Yamuna for having me. Here today is a great honor to be with you all to share my experiences of my working life. Before I begin with my experience, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, next slide, please. I'm Nadia Tanam Ramadas. You can call me as Naka. I'm a petrochemical engineer graduate, 2018 May in fact, and I'm a um, August 2018 conversation batch. And now I'm pursuing Master of Engineering Science in Utah as well as a part time, major in material engineering, and I'm from Kampa, Sarah as well. 
and I'm a registered graduate engineer of Board of Engineers Malaysia known as BAM and also Institution of Engineers Malaysia known as IEM. So we are waiting in time. I begin my experience first. Uh, next slide, please. Next slide. Okay. After I graduated from Utah, which is August 2018, my congregation, I get hired by the top club on September itself. So I joined the top club on 24th September 2018. Which everyone know that the top club is the world's largest glove manufacturer. And yes, I get hired in factory nine. Since we know that there are a lot of factories in glove uh, for the top glove, but I had I work in manufacturing department of factory nine, where there are total have nine lines which produce nitrile and also natural rubber gloves. So I hired it as a, I joined as a researcher for that uh, don't mistake it with the researcher. It's like, oh, only PhD student can be a researcher. It's not like that. Researcher is also known as an engineer. I'm a researcher engineer in a production department where I have to do all the job like production as well as I have to do some research on to improve the quality of the club as well. Uh, in top club, I can say like, is the best place you can learn a lot, you can explore a lot. Although I'm a newbie, I entered the top club for the first month. Of course, I'm not treated as a newbie. They, you can't expect that they will teach you every single thing. No, not at all. But they will guide you somehow. They will be have an OJ and or OJT, everything. Even before I start my OJT, I already assigned for a project. At that time, I'm like, oh my god, it's a project. Because I'm just graduate from Utah. But I'm not less confident because I already trained in Utah how you should be responsible for the project. Because in Utah, there will be a lot of projects will be given. You have to lead it. You have to uh, manage the time to submit and everything. So when they provide me the project, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Then the first month itself, I already begin with the project. Of course, I have a mentor who would guide me to do so. After the project itself, only there is provided OJT and so on. And in four plus, uh, they will expect you to have a, a project every month. So every time during the meeting, you can present your project. No matter it's fail or success, it doesn't matter. But make sure you have a project. But of course, it can. You have to have a project that can contribute to the company. So in that time, I have one successful project, uh, which is I actually replacing the cleaning agent. And I have successfully reduced CCM. It's known as effect per million up to 20.885%, which can contribute the department chemical CPC, which is cost per carton, about 25%. So I can say that this is one of my uh, small achievements during that time. And now I want to tell you about this photo story. Of course, the first one is my ID. The second one, and I'm go the plant here. And with the people with the club, it's a group in front of the top club tower. When the time we went for the OJT, and those are my friends uh, from different departments. I'm the only one from production, and others all like from planning and from even from finance. And the orange color is from safety. And we have like a one Malaysia team. And the set the, the most common one is I took during I put inspection for the uh, oven. Of course, very hot until I sweat terribly. So it's like a memory, so I just took the picture. And then the below is during the plant work, which is guided by me. 
and the one is a line supervisor, which is a worker. Yes, and of course the third one, the middle one is of uh, is the plant floor also from. It's not mistaken, it's from Mila University, and also guided by me. Another achievement I can say that I able to conduct the plant tour within one month when I'm joining Poplar. Until like my manager question, my supervisor like, are you sure Naga can do that? Naga can conduct the plant tour because normally like above six months of experience only can, can uh, sorry, allow to conduct the tour. But within one month, my supervisor asked me to conduct Oh, Rita and Rita, I'm just able to do it, and my manager is really surprised. Like, oh, this girl can able to do it. And then the last one is during PG run. Publix always organize. Uh, uh, top, top, the advantage of Publix is Publix not only focus on work. They have like other activities. They will have monthly gathering, <clears throat> and then like PG run. So this is the PG run during 2018. Uh, participants around two to 300 participants and I, I get eight place. It's also like everyone surprised, all my colleagues in my office like, oh, this quiet girl, I don't know whether can run like that. Even my manager teach me, oh my God, it's really surprised. So next please. Please next slide. Uh, Dr. Yamna, next slide. Okay. And then this one, the first one is the S2, S9 team, which is factory two and factory one because it's same management. Uh, Miss before. Okay. The one during the monthly gathering, we will have a monthly gathering and during that time, like uh, like January babies, February babies, uh, they will celebrate their birthday. And that time, that one is January monthly gathering. Uh, it's like coincidentally fall on my birthday, which is the first uh, January. And they celebrate the uh, January baby celebration. So we took the picture with everyone is inside, like all the employees from every department, even the manager, our junior manager is everyone inside. So after six months, it's the time that I have to leave top love. It's just because I already have the thought I want to pursue my study in master. And when I come to know that there is another opportunity that I can continue my master, so I decided to resign from top love and I want to continue my master in full time. And the photo, the another three photos is during uh, the last day of my at Poplar's, my work life at Poplar's is with my managers, my supervisor, and this is the dark blue, all is engineering team, and can't you say bye bye to Poplar's? Yeah, next please. So from here, uh, I can say that actually I able to stand in Poplar's just because everything I learned from you thought. As what I said, like only after six months you can conduct the tour, but I able to conduct it within one month. And that one also my supervisor asked me to do. But that time I'm not like, oh, I'm one month, I can't know. I didn't lose confidence. This confidence I learned from Lisa because whenever we have presentation, each of you have to present. You cannot be like, oh, it's the four in one group and only one has to be there. No, all the lecturers, when I study, every lecturer like uh, advice to, advise us everyone to present. This is what I learned from Lisa and also the report writing and everything. In fact, well, as an engineer, I'm not only working in manufacturing, also I have to go R&D department. I have to say everything because I'm this quality inspection and also do some researchers. So you need the laboratory skills where you should 
uh, applicable to your industry and also report writing. No matter your engineer or HR or whatever position you are, you have to know how to write the report. Okay, move on. And after I resigned from top 12, and then I continue my studies in master. And yes, the master will help me to go into UP packing. It's a link. Because uh, the time UP packing is uh, one who sponsor my project, it is a company project. If I have to produce coding for basket, uh, I don't want to go deep with that project, but I like to tell you during that master project, seriously, there are a lot of um, challenges I face because the project is a company project that you cannot find in online. You really, really cannot find any resources from internet because it's really confidential. If you can find also, it won't be direct. It will be very indirect. Here where I learned that I have to know how to link the indirect information is the results that I get and how to have a correct formulation by myself. So from here, I learned that everything cannot be spoon fit to you. You have to learn to find out and get what uh use what you get means like i say right the result all i get is indirect and i have to link with the result that i have this is my master study and i actually completed my research within one year it's a big achievement also and of course i have my supervisor and other lecturers support this one of course and last year Unfortunately, due to the NPO, uh, the company stopped paying me my allowance. It's not their, their fault. It's actually due to the NPO. So there is no choice. I have to convert my study to part-time. And the time, I need to find a job. Of course, I want to go back to hospital, but I really need a job urgently. And there will be a long process if you want to go back to hospital. And I haven't completed my study yet. So that time I go to UP Taking in Jambar uh, to ask the boss whether he can hire me or not. And also he so happily hired me because I'm doing his company project. And I already completed the research, just so have to find out the result. Uh, UP Taking in Jambar is actually is a gasket manufacturer. They are like import the material and they fabricate the gasket. So it's one of the biggest uh, manufacturers in Malaysia as well, and they are growing. And now when I'm working here, now I'm working as an engineer in R&D department. To be honest, I'm the only engineer in that factory. Because it's a small factory and it's a growing factory, and now we want to set up the entire plant. If I mentioned just now, my project is to you know the coating. So now we have to have the coating plan for ourselves. So I have to help my boss to set up the entire plant, which is like purchasing all the materials, like the chemicals, machinery, and how to set up all the safety things I have to handle. So for this, of course, all the subjects that I learned in Utah have to be applicable, like OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Environment Health. As to applicable, and then since it's polymer, of course, polymer science, material engineering, all those kind of subjects, even engineer for as uh, English for engineering also is important. Next, so from here, this is like my short experiences because as an engineer, you don't mistake like oh, engineer have to go manufacturing, you have to take the screwdriver or do this, do that. No, it's about everything. As an engineer, you have to work on industry in the manufacturing on the field. Yes. Next, you have to do research as well in the lab. As well in the lab, you have to know the laboratory skill. Second, quality inspection. So you have to know the like um, functional groups or surface, all those kind of things. So as an engineer, you have to change the mindset that engineering is everything, not only machines, 
hot environment and everything. So from here, I try to highlight here everything, whatever I'm doing now, and I experience in hot girls. It's just because you are hot. You are not only providing you the courses or even the subject, all the lecturers is guiding you for the industry. Don't expect the lecturer to spoon feed you. When the lecturer didn't give you, don't call them because they are training you. So it will be easier for you when you enter the industry. So I really thank the user and also all the lecturers who taught all the subjects to me. And yeah, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss Naga. So hopefully you can see this. Uh, okay, you can uh, see this slide here. Okay, this is our graduates. Okay, and then uh, you can see this is just a fraction of our graduate. You can see that some of our graduate works in the multinational oil and gas company like Exxon Mobil. Then you have Muda Paper Mills, we're actually producing the papers. Then we have. Uh, phosphate additive chemicals, rubber company, cement company, okay, and then Huawei, okay, we have these two students are in, I think, in uh, Middle East now, okay, we have gas company, okay, we have Jabil circuit, so you can see here, it's not uh, one, uh, okay, everybody is going to go and work in Petronas, or everybody going to work in rubber company, no, basically, this uh, petrochemical uh, engineering, have 70% similarity in terms of syllabus on what we teach to you um, compared to the chemical engineering. So they are 70% similar. Okay, so, but the 30% we give emphasize only focus on petrochemical. Uh, some of the subjects were highlighted by Mr. Yong and Ms. Naga just now, uh, like polymer technology, like petrochemical processes, uh, and then we also have the organic chemistry, which is more focused on petrochemicals. And then uh, occupational safety and health in petrochemical plant. So we are more, uh, we give you that extra. At the same time, you also have the fundamental knowledge required by a chemical engineer. And why the chemical and the petrochemical engineer can work in wide variety of field, because they have the knowledge to upscale a process basically it's just that okay they have the knowledge to upscale the process so uh, before we end this uh, just a brief for our friends here okay who attend the webinar so i will give you a brief introduction about utah so this is utah campuses and we have two campus one actually located what we need campus campus in para okay this is 170 km from cal city if you um travel from kl is approximately take about two hours and we have another branch, okay, which at uh, Sungai Long Campus in Kajang, okay, in Selangor. So, okay, this is the aerial view for our main campus, Utah Kampa Campus. So, as you all can see, um, this uh, beautiful campus actually surrounded by the beautiful lakes. Okay, definitely, I, I think you can have a great memory if you spend your study life at Utah. And this is located at uh, built on 1,300 uh, acre piece of land. So you can see uh, we have a complete facility, like and a beautiful environment. Okay, we have this uh, library and then facilities and different faculty surrounded here. Okay, let's move on to the next. And this is the Tun Dr. Ling Leong Sik Hall, also located at uh, Kamba Campus. Uh, come, uh, come campus para and uh, actually this grand hall uh, we have this uh, uh, graduation ceremony uh, for twice per year but due to the pandemic and um, actually we can only have this uh, e-convo but previously um, our, gra our graduate actually they have a great memory here after they complete their uh, university program okay so this is a sculpture of uh, Confucius and Einstein Okay, and this is actually located at the open space in front of our Heritage Hall building in Utah Kamba campus. The sculpture actually symbolizes the universality of learning and thinking with the convergence of wisdom from both the East and the West. Okay. 
And our campus actually rich with biodiversity, as uh, we, we mentioned earlier. Um, beside uh, beautiful lakes, actually, you can spend your uh, time and memories with your uh, university uh, friends. Okay, maybe after a lesson, you can just walk around. Definitely, you, you will love this place. Okay. And we have a uh, Utah Sungai Long campus, and I'm going to show you the facility we have. We have a lecture hall and this um, multi purpose hall, gymnasium center, um, engineering lab. Okay, the traditional Chinese medicine lab, okay, for MBBS as well. And we have this um, studio for our broadcasting student, okay, nursing lab, okay. So let's talk about our Utah uh, ranking and awards. Um, okay, for World University Ranking 2021, okay, it's actually 500 to 600, okay. For um, our Utah and Asia University Ranking this year, actually 190, okay. Um, one thing to highlight to our friends, actually um, the graduate, they can find a job, okay, within half year. So the employability rate is about 97% after they graduate from Utah. So you don't have to worry, uh, you, 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 you are not able to find a job because of most of the um, reason, actually they, uh, they, they gain the experience during their uni university life, uh, especially in this internship program. So they still stay connect with the uh, company outside. Okay, so um, let's, Going to next, and this is uh, the ranking and awards which we'll, we would like to highlight to you. We actually rank second in THE, Times Higher Education, and in Malaysia. So this is just for your information. Okay. And let's conclude the programs that we have. We have 124 academic programs at the moment, and we consist of uh, four foundation programs, 77 bachelor program, 31 master program, 12 PhD program. And one thing to highlight is applicant who do not fulfill Utah English language re requirement, he or she will need to um, attend this uh, EEP class English enhancement program for one month, okay? If uh, before they continue for this uh, foundation, if they do not meet the requirement in this uh, English language, they have to attend this class. For a degree, if they do not meet the uh, requirement in this uh, English subject or English language, they have to proceed for two months of EEP class before they join Utah, okay? So this is the areas of study. I'm not going to, uh, to expand one by one, but definitely you can find um, the variety of choices option for you, okay? Based on your interest, your ambition. Okay, for example, you good in mathematics, definitely you can think about IT program. Okay, and maybe you're good in physics, chemistry, then you can think about engineering program, as well as we have art subject, like um, art program, sorry, art, social science and education, okay, Chinese studies, and we have uh, MBBS program as well, okay. So for foundation in arts and in science, this is a duration of study one year, but uh, for those, they actually prefer study uh, in Sungai Long or Kampat is okay. This uh, optional for students to, to choose. But uh, let's uh, look at this exceptional foundation programs. For example, you are leading to architecture, Chinese medicine, MBBS, fish therapy, okay, and so on. You have to spend your foundation year only in Sungai Long campus and same as uh, Chinese study. You have to spend your foundation in Kampat as well, okay. So um, I will highlight the engineering, uh, uh, sorry, engineering technology and built environment program that uh, uh, Utah Kampa campus offer. So as you can see, we have electronic engineering, environmental engineering, industrial engineering program, and as well as petrochemical engineering that our Utah alumni graduate from this field of study. Okay, and we have construction management program, OSH program. Elo uh, electronic system program, industrial management program. Uh, one thing I would like to highlight this both program actually uh, is a work-based learning program, which means you, this is a three years degree program. You spend two years of study and one year of um, uh, work-based learning, which means we uh, arrange you in um, industry, in company. So you can have this uh, hands-on uh, research project and definitely you can apply what you can learn later. Okay, 
So uh, we highlight the engineering program, uh, especially in this professional recognition. So uh, you don't have to worry that engineering program, actually after you graduate from Utah, the uh, engineering program we have, actually is accredited, uh, accredited and recognized by uh, most of the country. For example, we have Australia, Canada, China, Chinese Taipei, Hong Kong, China, India, uh, Ireland, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, and so on. Okay. And let's talk about international partnership. Okay. So uh, in Asia, we have uh, Brunei, China, India, okay, and so on. Um, for example, we have student exchange program, study tour, uh, research project, and even um, some activities we can uh, have this collaborate uh, with this uh, country. Uh, as an example for you to, uh, as you can see here. So um, it actually it's up to 290 local and overseas university that collaborate with uh, Utah. Okay, so definitely it's a wonderful um, learning experience. Okay, beside uh, you spend your time in University of Tungku Abdul Rahman. So um, we come to the end. Uh, for any online inquiry, definitely you can live chat with us at this uh, website, study.utah.edu.my. If you are more comfortable with uh, email to ask some question, you can email to this address, inquiry at utah.edu.my or WhatsApp or call us at this hotline number, 016-223-3557. Or even you can update our university information from time to time at our Utah for you, uh, sorry, at our Facebook, WeChat and Telegram account, okay? And thank you again to Dr. Yamuna and Mr. Yong um, and Ms. Naga for your sharing. And thank you again for our attendees to attend this uh, webinar. So we hope to see you again. Uh, remember, stay safe and take care. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.